Good evening, folks. We are back. Yes, we are back. The 2024 season is here. We are back with the Racing Podcast. I am your host, Colby Evans, aka Start and Parker here. And man, I am so excited. It feels like feels like just yesterday we were talking about the 2023 test. And here we are today with the 2024 test. Um, lots of cars, lots of drivers, lots of 2024 uh things to discuss. So much. This is a huge show for you guys tonight. So I hope you guys are in for the long haul. Uh, would wouldn't shock me for here for an hour and 90 minutes. We're in for a long haul tonight. So um I'm so excited here, guys. Uh got my neat little new little microphone here. So I hope you guys are hearing me okay. Um, like I said, we're gonna go over the Daytona test entry list. We got so many announcements to cover. I was gonna do a couple of small podcasts here and there, but I decided against that, and we're gonna bunch it all together for this one. Uh, we're gonna go through my little intro. I go through at the beginning of every podcast. Um, and then we will jump right into it with the Daytona test entry list. So you guys know the drill uh, for the longtime listeners and the new listeners of the show. Uh, follow me on uh, social media X now that it's called no longer Twitter. Uh, Start and Parker on there. Um, like and subscribe to the channel. We are so close. So close, guys, to 1500 subs. So uh, lick that like button. Uh, hit the subscribe button. Super chats are open. If you want to send one, you're more than welcome to. Um, and of course, check out the racing experts.com uh, for all NASCAR media related content. They're the official media partner of this podcast. And yes, I'm rocking my Biagi Brothers shirt that I got for Christmas. So uh, let's just jump right into it, shall we? The 2024 um, Daytona test. It's a tradition that's been held in ARCA for many years. It's a shame that NASCAR doesn't necessarily do the test anymore. Uh, but ARCA has done their test uh, year after year after year. It's just a fun thing for some drivers. You know, to go out there, run some laps at Daytona, and obviously for the, you know, the main ARCA teams to get out there and uh, test their setups for Daytona, test some new equipment and all that good stuff. But uh, we finally got the entry list. Usually we get it a couple days beforehand and lots of drivers. I'm not even sure if every single driver is on this entry list. Sometimes this gets updated, but we're going to st we're starting right from the top of the entry list. This might take me a little bit to get through, so bear with me, guys. We're going to go through by every single driver and entry. So starting off, uh, we have the number two of Andres Perez de Lara. Of course, he is running full-time this year, uh, once again, for Rev Racing. Uh, we have the 3M for Willie Mullins. The following cars will be from Mullins Racing. Willie Mullins, Ryan Kuhn, Blake Lethane, and Davey Callahan will be running for Mullins Racing. I'm um, in the three. LeVar Scott in the six. He will be running full-time main as well. So two full-time cars in the main division for Rev Racing again. Eric Cadell will be in the seven. Uh, Sean Core will be in the eight. Now we start off the many, many drivers for fast track racing. Gotta love Andy Hillenberg. Apologize if I botched some names. But I'm going to try my best to pronounce them. Uh, we got uh, starting in the 10, we have Ed Pompa, Brian Serkisi. Hopefully I didn't botch that. Uh, Daylin Hairston, Dylan Labo, Blaine Donahue, and Matt Kemp. And then in the 11, we have Tyler Reif. Yes, Tanner Reif's younger brother. Jacob Goad, Michael Hindy, Chase Miller. I wonder, I don't know which Chase Miller that is. I'm hoping it's the start in Park era Chase Miller, but unfortunately, I don't think it is. Um, they are in the 11. And then we have two guys in the 12, Sean Hingarani. Yes, that's Sean Hingarani is uh, testing for fast track racing and everybody's favorite from the West Circuit, mine included, um, Takuma Koga. Yes, Takuma Koga is driving the number 12. Um, not sure if Takuma, he's shown interest in wanting to race uh, Daytona, but it looks like he's just running the test for now. Still great to see Takuma. Everyone loves Takuma Koga. Uh, so that fills out the 12. Then we got Chris Wright in the 15, obviously uh, one of the main full-time guys for Venturini this year. Uh, we got Marco Andretti. He's running the 17. Two guys running the 17. We have Marco Andretti and Tyler Reif's older brother, Tanner. Tanner Reif is in the 17. Could that be a little inkling of where Tanner Reif might be running this year, uh, considering that his old ride is now occupied by Jack Wood in the ARCA West series? So maybe... Tanner Rive goes for the ARCA West title for Cook Racing Technologies. We'll just have to see. I think it'd be a good fit. Uh, we have William Sawalich and Tanner Gray. We'll talk more about them uh, when we get done talking about the entry list, uh, news for them and their season. 
William Swalich, obviously not old enough to run the big tracks yet, uh, but he is eligible to run the Daytona test. Uh, I believe he did run it last year too. Very beneficial for him. Any track time at a plate, uh, plate track is beneficial. And then you got Tanner Gray, who's going to be driving the 18 um, as well at the plate tracks. So beneficial for him to get more track time. Jake Finch in the 20. Amber Balkin in the 22. And this is kind of interesting. You got uh, um, five cars for Venturini. I don't remember the last time we saw Venturini running five cars. And the number 22, nonetheless. Very new um, Venturini number. Uh, Amber Balkin also did announce that she will be running uh, full-time ARCA this year. Did not announce which number, though, yet. So we're going to have to speculate on that. But uh, the 22, for me, I feel like this is just a test number for them. I don't know if 22 is going to be a primary number. Tony Bridinger is back in the 25 again. Tim Richmond in the 27. Great to see them back. Uh, Shane, I try to get this name back. Shane Van Gisbaren. If I botched it again, I'm sorry, guys. I'm I'm not the best with names, uh, but he'll be in the 28. Uh, Landon Huffman is also in the 28. Now, I don't believe this is the Landon Huffman that runs the High Rock car. This is Landon S. Huffman, who runs for Pinnacle on the late model circuit as well. So uh, not the Landon Huffman that most of you are familiar with. The guy who has the YouTube channel, runs the High Rock car. That's not that Landon Huffman. It's the other Landon Huffman. Who would have thought there'd be two Landon Huffmans in racing? I know. Racing's, racing's weird like that. Then you got Connor Mosack. He has left uh, Toyota. He is back with Chevrolet. He's testing number 28. Um, then we got Rise Motorsports in the 31. Tim Goulet, Rita Goulet, Casey Carden, and Mitch Gibson. They will be running the 31 car. Now note, uh, that is an SB2 engine, not an Ilmore, so it will be restricted. I'm on power, of course. Uh, Christian Rose, who just announced today he will be returning full-time. Uh, it's great. More full-time cars, the better. Christian Rose in the 32, uh, returning for the Daytona test. Two Van Oust entries, the 34 of Isaac Johnson and the 35 of Greg Van Oust. Of course, Greg, um, thankfully, has been cleared. He cleared his NASCAR um, test. I Sorry, swallowed right there. Uh, he cleared his NASCAR physical test, so great to see that Greg Van Elst is back. Obviously, that awful crash he had at Talladega last year. Um, hopefully, he can get back and avenge his Daytona win and come back again. As far as we know, Isaac Johnson also will be running the Daytona race for Van Elst. So, looks like Van Elst Motorsports might have two bullets uh, for Daytona. So, that's pretty cool. And, yeah, if Greg could go back-to-back, -back, that'd be awesome. That would be absolutely awesome. Uh, so, yeah, continuing on here. And we did note um, no 30 car. You, uh, you guys go me, uh, heard me go straight from 28 to 31. No 30 car. So, no, uh, the plans for, um, you know, uh, I can't think of the team name right now. Rhett Jones. Rhett, uh, Rhett Jones uh, Motorsports. Rhett Motorsports. Um, they're not at the test. Uh, Frankie Munez is uh, rumored to return for a part-time schedule, but it's kind of shocking not to see him on this test. Makes me wonder if they just didn't have the funds to come here or maybe they're not running Daytona. Who knows? We'll see in the coming weeks. Uh, we got Thomas. Oh, man, I, I apologize for this. I'm going to botch this. And Anuzatia. God, I'm sorry if I botched that name, but Thomas Anuzeta will be in the 44 for uh, Jeff McClure's team. Again, I apologize, guys. I'm trying my best with the names here. Um, uh, great to see McClure's team back. They were oh so close to winning the race last year with Jason White. Literally lost it in the last um, half of the lap. Uh, then we go all the way to the Emerling Gase entry. Uh, we have Patrick Emerling, uh, Kyle Keller, Armani Williams, and CJ McLaughlin will be running uh, the 53 car. Gus Dean in the 55. Hunter DeChantel returns to the brother-in-law motorsports team. He'll be in the 57. Uh, John Armendia will be in the 63. Is he the son of Joe Armendia, the former Bush driver? Anyone in the chat confirm that for me? Because I, I think he is. Then we got the other fast track racing car, the 66, uh, which will be piloted by Mason Maggio, Lance Griffith, uh, Michael Contarino, and Re Rebecca... Monopoly, uh, Monopoly, uh, I think that's how you pronounce it. Um, so they'll be in the 66. And then you got the Kimmel Racing entries, uh, the 68 of Jill Linster, 
Uh, you got the 69A of Scott Milton, which will be his blue Ford Mustang that he's actually going to be running at Daytona. And then you have the 69B, which will be the black Ford, which has a fusion nose. Uh, the 69, 169 car will have a Mustang and the other 69 car will have a fusion nose. Uh, and one's blue and one's black. So they are, they are different, uh, but great to see Will is going to be out there. Will is going to be out there testing with Scott. Um, Andy J, Andy Jankowiak, he'll have a couple of guys um, himself. And then Andrew Patterson, they'll be piloting the 73 car. It did say that Andy J, although there was no formal announcement, it did say, though, that in, in the article that he might be running full time this year, which would be great. Everybody loves Andy Jankowiak. Although uh, we'll wait for an official announcement on that. Hopefully we'll hear something about that because, man, if Andy J is going full time, he's the, I mean, I'm not saying he's the favorite for the championship, but he's definitely going to be the fan favorite that people are going to be pulling for. Because who, who doesn't love Andy J? Everyone loves Andy J. Of course, we got the 74, Mandy Chick. She got, I think it was a top five, top 10 finish in Daytona last year. Then you got the second brother in law motorsports entry, uh, the 75, Austin McDaniel and Brian Dowsett will be in the 75. Uh, Costner Weaver, we got a lot of news on them. We'll talk about in a little bit too. Uh, the 93 of Caleb Costner and the 93, the 97 of Jason Kitzmiller. Great to see Dale Shear back on the big tracks. Shear speed, they bought a, they got a plate car, or I don't know if it is a plate car, but they got a car for a plate track. We'll put it like that. Um, great to see him back. Mike, Michael Maples, uh, he's a dirt racer. He'll be running the 99 for fast track. Uh, we got some news on him. I do believe he will be a full-time driver for Fast Track Racing, driving the number 99. So Fast Track Racing, they ran the full-time, uh, they ran with Veer Motorsports last year in the 66, and Fast Track Racing could be running a full-time driver in the number 99, which would be kind of cool. And then we got the other Fast Track Racing car. Yes, Fast Track Racing has a lot of people who do this. Trust me. Uh, Ryan Roulette. We'll be in the 01 along with Chase Berta, Justin Bonsignor uh, from the, uh, uh, I was going to say late models, that's a knucklehead move, uh, from the modified division. And that rounds out, I believe, the final fast track entry. Um, then we got Leland Honeyman and Anthony Bello will be uh, piloting the 02 for Youngs. Shout out to Leland Honeyman, by the way, for getting um, the, not only for a ride for Youngs Motorsports, but they're going Xfinity Racing. So good for them. And then we got an interesting thing with Patched to Win Motorsports. Now, they are also driving number 06 next to Peterson. So is this a separate 06 organization or is this Peterson? Again, we don't know for sure, but Cody Dennison, you guys might know him. Uh, you guys might know uh, Cody Dennison. He, uh, Camelot 1331 YouTube channel, that's him. He also runs the number 12 in the Grand National Super Series. So if you, get, if you guys have seen a random Ryan Newman car, an old Ryan Newman Attel car from like 2006 racing in a random short track circuit, that's him. That's the guy who, uh, that's Camelot 1331. His name is Cody Dennison. But yeah, he's, he's a cool guy. Uh, he's cool. Um, then we got James Simmons Jr. They're running for Patch to Win Motorsports. I'm curious to find out more about that organization. Then we got Ben Peterson. Uh, this is the Peterson Motorsports lineup in the uh, 06. So glad to see Ben uh, Ben Peterson back. For the people who don't know, um, the people who do not know, man, Ben, Pe we almost lost Ben. You know, he has not been in the Arca Series in a long time. Ben Peterson um, nearly lost his life. I, I won't go into the full details, but it, he was in a really, really bad accident. So great to see Ben back out there. Great to see Ben back behind the wheel. Um, definitely one of those feel-good stories, even if it's just for the test. Uh, still great to see Ben back. Uh, we're just grateful that he's still with us. Because uh, what that guy went through, man, and for him to still be here is a miracle. Then you got uh, Nate Moeller. Obviously, he's one of Peterson's, uh, been the crew chief, one of their main crew guys. He's also driven a couple races for them. Great friend in the garage. Uh, good brother in the garage. I love him. Presley Sora, yeah, everyone's uh, one of everyone's favorite e-racers. He'll be running. I love that. I haven't um, been able to. I met Presley one time, but we really didn't know each other, so I didn't really talk to him. But he he's a good kid, really good kid. It's great to see him get this opportunity. Uh, Tommy O'Leary, who remembers Tommy O'Leary? 
from the Peterson team, like back 2010, Tommy O'Leary makes a random makes a random appearance driving for Peterson Motorsports. When was the last time he even drove for Peterson Motorsports? Like at least nine to ten years. And here he is back driving for them at Daytona. Gotta love it. Gotta love it. So oh, great to see Tommy O'Leary back. And then Kenneth Moran rounds out the Peterson uh, entry. Uh, they are also running an SB2 motor. Everybody else is running Ilmore. The 31 and the 06 are the lone SB2 cars. Uh, not that it really makes a difference. It's just, like I said, a little bit down on power is all. Um, then Jeff Scott Field will be in the 07 uh, for Finney Motorsports. And that pretty much rounds out your field. Carson Cottville is listed. Uh, I do believe they said he was on a team. I'm going to look through trying to look through real quick and see um, which team he might run for again. Hang on, guys. I'm kind of scrolling through my phone right now trying to see where he's going to run for. Uh, nope, I haven't found anything yet. Is there any news on where Carson Quapel? Has anyone else seen anything where Carson Quapel might be in the uh, – I can't imagine he wouldn't be in the 28. I mean, he ran that car at Kansas last year, so that's my guess, but there's been no confirmation of where Carson um, is going to be driving. But, uh, I mean, I imagine he'll be there. Every test experience helps. But, yeah, look at this list, guys. I mean, over 70 drivers, um, nearly 40 cars. And I think it's safe to say that Daytona, we might actually see a Daytona ARCA race. Who would have thunk it? We might see DNQs at the Daytona ARCA race in February. I'm telling you, it is so great to see the intrigue and the uh, interest in this series back up. Because I'll admit, guys, there, there were some years where, you know, like I said, I was scared. 2020 had the lowest field ever at just 33. And ever since then, it's gone back up. And that is such a great thing to see. Um, lots of different cars, lots of different teams. I, myself, was supposed to do this. Yes, yours truly, right here behind the camera, uh, was supposed to go to the Daytona test this year. Unfortunately, um, approvals with the series. Uh, just just didn't uh, get done in time. And the funding, the funding was there, but it also kind of wasn't, you know, those kind of deals. It was there, but it wasn't. So I'll be there in 2025. I can confirm that right now. I will be at the Daytona test driving in 2025. Unfortunately, I got to wait uh, about, uh, what, 370 days. So, yeah. Uh, um. So, yeah, just a great thing for ARCA, great news for ARCA. It's, it's a fun event that they put on every year, the test paint schemes that we all love. Who doesn't love a good, bland test paint scheme? It's it's just the best. So uh, the Daytona test entry will be carried out over a period of two days, um, this Friday and Saturday. Not all teams run both days. A lot of teams sometimes will run just Friday. Now, it's an all-day test. It's not like it's only a couple hours. This is pretty much an all-day test. It, uh, they start early in the morning, and it closes. Um, it closes pretty much uh, before it starts to get dark. Otherwise, it's kind of all day. And a lot of these teams will accomplish pretty much everything they set out to do, especially if they only have a couple of drivers actually testing. They'll usually get all that done in one day. Whereas teams like Andy Hillenberg. You'll usually see them stay both days because they got to get every driver rotated through, which is not e as easy as you think. I mean, I don't know how Andy does it. Really, you have to give him respect, man. That's a lot of cars. That's a lot of crew members. And that's a lot of drivers to cycle through, man. That's respect. And this is just a test. This isn't even a race. This is a test. This is for fun. Oh, oh. Oh, yeah. And like I said, some of the notable guys that you guys see on the ARCA, um, you know, normal ARCA races that aren't here. Uh, like I said, 48 of Brad Smith. Uh, big things coming for Brad Smith Motorsports in 2024, or this year, I should say. Um, Alex Club, also not here. He did get a plate car, too. Uh, so you can add them to the list. Uh, the 91, Brayton Laster, we'll talk about that in another second. He'll be there, too. So like I said, I think DNQs are very well possible. And I was like, well, what does that mean? Is Brad going to go home? No. You know, for everyone worried that Brad Smith might miss the show, no, he'll he'll make he'll make the race, even though he'll be slow, um, because of the SB two, uh, due to owner points from the previous year. Brad, um, 
Brad, Brad will be in the show. Same with the zero six due to owner points, Brad and Wayne guys, you don't have to worry about them missing the show. They will be fine for Daytona. Same thing with all of the Andy Hillenberg cars. Those cars will be safe uh, by virtue of the owner points. Um, by virtue of the owner points. Um, so, yes. So, that's the Daytona test entry list. Uh, lots of heavy hitters. So far, uh, looks like the main full-time guys that we have announced for the championship, as far as we know, um, will be the number two of Andres Perez de Lara, Alex Club in the 0-3, LeVar Scott in the 6, Chris Wright in the 15, Amber Balkin in an unknown number, 32 of Christian Rose, uh, Brad Smith in the 48, Caleb Costner in the 93. And if the rumors are true, it might be Andy Jankowiak, but I'm not going to count it yet because we don't have the confirmation. So as of now, I believe if my counts are correct, eight full-time drivers. Now, realistically, I mean, we'll be honest here, realistically of those, um, realistically of those eight full-time drivers, how many of them actually have a legitimate chance the championship? Again, let's be honest here. Um, I wouldn't count out Caleb Costner. I really wouldn't. He, uh, you know, I, I've chat with Caleb a couple of times, a really good guy, hardworking guy. Um, they have really stepped up their motor program. Caleb's got some good stuff. So I wouldn't count him out. I would say he could be like uh, what maybe Greg Van Aus could have been last year, the underdog that nobody would expect to be contended for the championship, but actually has a shot. So I'll throw in, I'll throw in, um, Caleb Costner is a shot, but Christian Rose, Chris Wright, LeVar Scott, Andres Perez-Delar, I feel like are your four biggest bets right now for the championship. Um, Amber Balkan, of course, will be there, but I, I no disrespect. I just don't see her, uh, being faster than Andres, LeVar, and Chris Wright on a weekly basis. But I guess you can include her as an underdog, just like Caleb Costner, you know, you, you never know. Stranger things have happened in this series. Uh, but as far as I know, those are the confirmed full-time drivers, which is not a bad lineup. That's better than last year. I mean, we'll admit. I think the one thing that we can really be positive about is that the championship battle uh, last year wasn't much of one, and this year we'll have more of one, which is always a positive. Um uh, like I said, some of the drivers that are uh, only running this for the test, lot, most of the guys in the field, like I said, guys like me who just want to go out there and have some fun. I mean, guys like, you know, guys like Matt Kemp, uh, guys like uh, Takuma Koga. I don't even know if Koga is running this race. They're just out here to have some fun. Um, and, you know, and shout out to guys like that. Same thing with Presley Sora. Uh, and I, and I, anyone who watches this podcast, and I seriously mean it, be like those guys. Um if you do have previous racing experience, um, reach out to these teams, man. You know, it doesn't cost as much as you think. I can't, I can't say the financial is live on the air because I might get some flack for it, but it, it ain't as much as you guys think to do this Daytona test. So if you do have uh, some decent racing experience, it can be dirt. doesn't necessarily have to be asphalt. doesn't necessarily have to be asphalt, but, um, if you do have previous racing experience, reach out to these teams. If you want to run laps at Daytona, it might not be in an actual race, but at the end of the day, you're going to be out there in a 600 to 700 horsepower, actually on a short track. Yes. About a 500, uh, I think about 510 is the ARCA package 500. Um, it's not as much as you'd think to run this test. So reach out to these race teams. It's $400 for the team. It's way more than $400 to do this test. Um, it's not that much, guys. Trust me. So if you do have previous racing experience, you want to run laps at Daytona, there are plenty of seats available. I'll, almost any team will do this. Any ARCA team will do the test if you bring the money. So if you want to do this, guys, I strongly, strongly encourage you to do it. I'm doing it next year. Um, and if you have any previous racing experience, I would reach out, guys. It's a lot of fun. ARCA is a big family. Probably one of the most welcoming garages uh, I've ever been in. So I strongly, strongly recommend it. Uh, but yeah, like I said, it'll be taking place on Thursday. Oh, Thursday, God. The haulers are arriving on Thursday. And then Friday and Saturday is the test. And then, of course, the race itself is a couple weeks later in February. So like I said, guys, the Arca Daytona test, lots of fun. Uh, 
lots of drivers. Hopefully no accidents. We went a couple years without accidents. Thank God. I mean, I think what some people fail to realize is it's kind of a really bad trend that we had for a couple years in the 2010s. Um, in the 2010s, uh, we had quite a few crashes in the test. I think uh, that just never made public because, um, you know, this obviously is not televised. So hopefully we can go another year with no incidents. Now, usually that's not a hard to do. I mean, it's a test. You're running in a draft at Daytona, but I don't know. S stuff can happen. Anything can happen when you're out there at 175 miles per hour. So hopefully everything goes smoothly for all my friends and all the great teams uh, that are competing this weekend. Um, so yeah, that pretty much wraps up the Daytona test, but we still have way more to talk about. Lots of topics to talk about. Um, I did want to give a sad shout out. Obviously, this is not news that I want to be saying, but I did want to take a second um, to give a shout out to an unfortunate legend that we lost. Um, uh, unfortunately, we lost Tim Steele a couple days ago. You guys might remember him. Uh uh, he drove the number 16 car in the Arca Series all those years ago. Um, he had he won the championship in 1993, 1996, and in 1997. Um, yeah, I guess. Well, I mean, true. Also, give a shout out to Kale Yarbrough, uh, another three time NASCAR champ, three time three time NASCAR champion, I believe. Um, uh, but yeah, for Tim Steele, we also lost him. 41 wins in the circuit, arguably next to Frank Kimmel. Uh, the probably one of the greatest ARCA drivers who ever lived. And I would easily say Tim Steele is one of the greatest what if stories of all time. Uh, he had everything going for him. You know, he had all that momentum building from his championship wins. He was the first ever ARCA driver, I believe, to make a million dollars in purse money. Um, and then he had that nasty crash at Atlanta in 97. He was never the same. Unfortunately, he was never the same. He he likely would have saved Bud Moore Engineering's cup team because the sponsorship and the opportunities that he had behind him, uh, potentially going to cup, probably would have saved Bud Moore's team from going out of business a couple years later. And um, yeah, he was never the same. He, he did return to the series and he still racked up, I think, another couple of wins or two, but he was just he was just never the same. And Tim retired from racing in the late 2000s, mid to late 2000s. And um, unfortunately, uh, I uh, I believe, I don't, man, well, well I don't want to speculate what the cause of death was, but unfortunately we lost him a couple of days ago. Only 60, what, 65? Or, no, not 60, 55. God, 55, right. Yeah, just so young. So young. I mean, 55 in this day and age is so young. And it was a stro oh, stroke. Yeah, just. So sad, man. 55 in this day and age is so young. I mean, Brad Smith's 55, and he's still out there running full time. So it's just it's a sad state of affairs, man. Um, you know, hopefully he's pain free now. He's up there in heaven racing with all the other legends in the sport. But yeah, RIP Kel Yarbrough and RIP to Tim Steele. Just wanted to talk about him for a brief moment because he was a very, uh, very, very vital part of Arca's history in the 90s and um, early 2000s. So RIP to him. Uh, some of the other topics that I had listed, uh, we want. I wanted to uh, speak a little bit more about Amber Balkin. So she is returning full-time into the ARCA series. Um, her first ARCA season since, I mean, I'll be honest with her. I'll be honest with her. I'll be honest with you guys. Her 2022 uh, with Rhett Jones was rough. That sometimes it was kind of hard to uh, watch. She did not do very well. Um, I don't know if I attribute that to her or the team. You know, I mean, obviously she had great sponsorship from Icon uh, Vehicle Dynamics. Um, but her results were not good. I, again, I don't know if it was her. I don't know if it was the team. But, yeah, just like I said, I'm not, I'm not trying to be rude. But I think the results just unfortunately speak for themselves. When a string of four straight DNFs with a crash – um, lots of engine failures. Um, she did return, uh, to ARCA in 2023, running a brief schedule, uh, uh, all of three races for Daytona. She showed amazing speed at Daytona. I mean, when you got a Venturini rocket ship, I mean, anything's possible. She finished sixth at Daytona, unfortunately lost the clutch really early 
uh, had a mechanical problem at Talladega, didn't really get to show what she had there. And then at Kansas, she had a suspension issue and had to retire. So really didn't get a chance to show anything um, in 2023. Um, but I do think, you know, there is a maturing process with everything. And I, I'm skeptical. You know, the Venerini equipment, you know, again, no disrespect to Mark Rett's team, but the Venerini equipment is a step up. It is definitely a step up uh, from um, the Mark Rett team. And so I, I, I think she'll do okay. I don't think she'll do bad. I mean, I don't think she'll do worse. You know, you're in a faster car. I think she'll do the same, if not better. Um, still no announcement on what Tony Bridinger is doing. I hope she's full-time ARCA again. That'd be nice. Um, or full-time truck, something for her. She's Hopefully it's not part-time in both series. I want her to see her full-time because Tony improved so much. I hope to see the improvement that we saw in Tony that we can also see uh, with uh, Amber as well. So uh, it is an unknown number. I know she's driving the number 22 um, in the test. That might be her number full time. Again, in the announcement that she made on her Twitter, her ex, I, I keep calling it Twitter. I'm just going to call it Twitter. She didn't exactly mention a number. She just said she was running full time for Venturini Motorsports. So that makes me think that this number 22 that she's running for the test might just be a placeholder number. Again, we'll just have to see. We'll just have to see. Um, and if she does run 22, that's fine. Cool to see Van Rini um, expanding to a different number. Um, the 30 car is still expected to run full-time. Frankie Munez uh, is not running full-time. Kind of, I felt bad for poor Frankie, man. Looked like that the 30 team was just trying to get through the year. Could not bring um, necessarily great equipment. Um, you know, they were trying their best. I know that. And Frankie was trying his best. But, man, they just had so much bad luck. It really wasn't their fault. Um, but Frankie, I think they said he was returning part-time. You know, I, I remember seeing that in a front stretch article like three or four months ago. Um, so we'll, we'll have to see. Uh, but hopefully the 30 team can have a better 2024. 2023 was quite rough for them. Um, yes. Yeah, and like I said, just to go over back to Amber, the 15 is being taken up by Chris Wright. The number 20 will be an all-star driver car, Gio Ruggiero will be in that car part-time, along with select drivers like with Jake Drew. And then the 25, that has not been announced, and the 55 has not been announced. Uh, so maybe Amber could be driving multiple numbers, like some people are saying in the chat. I could see that, too. At the end of the day, it doesn't really matter which number she's driving, as long as she's full-time. So that could be a case, too. Who knows? Uh, but yeah, great to see Amber Balkan back, and hopeful improvement for 2024. That is my... Uh, that is my hope. Uh, Brayton Laster. Brayton Laster, everyone's favorite pizza man next to Andy Jankowiak, because who doesn't love uh, all the pizza men? He will be driving the number 90. Uh, was it the number 91? I believe they said it was the number 91 uh, for Terry Carroll Motorsports, or the 90 or 91, either one of those two numbers. Um, anyone who's watched my show for a long time knows uh, I love Justin Carroll. Justin Carroll's just a lovely guy. Terry Carroll, Justin Carroll are hardworking men. Love them to death. Such good people. 91. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Just great people. I, I cannot say, um, say enough how great they are. Underdog to cheer for in the truck series. Cheer for Timmy Hill, but cheer for Justin Carroll in that 90 truck too. Really, really good people. Hardworking people. And they got great equipment. Uh, Brayton Laster is driving an ex Joe Gibbs car. The 91 car that he'll be driving will be an XJGR car. So it's it's good. It's good car, uh, good body, good engine. Um, you know, I know Brayton Laster doesn't have a lot of super speedway experience. He's got a couple races under his belt. But I think Brayton, you know, he's an underdog there. He could win that race. He's got the motor. He's got the car under him, man. That'd be cool. That'd be cool. Um, any news on Cody Coughlin? I would definitely expect Cody Coughlin to be back. Maybe not at Daytona, but... Definitely at the intermediates. Definitely at the intermediates for sure. Uh, but yeah, great opportunity for Brayton Laster here. He ran uh, for Mullins Racing last uh, the last couple years at uh, some of the plate races. Uh, not that this isn't a step up. Mullins has got great equipment too. Trust me. I mean, Willie puts together a great car. But Terry Carroll's uh, stuff is either just as good or if not better. Uh, so 
um, definitely a great opportunity for Brayton last year. Hopefully this leads to more races with Terry Carroll, but it all depends on that almighty dollar, unfortunately. But yeah, great opportunity for Brayton last year. Uh, they will, they're not participating in the test, but they will be uh, at uh, Daytona. Uh, one of the other topics is Gio Ruggiero. He'll be in the number, I mean, he'll be all over the place, realistically, uh, but he will be driving for Venturini Motorsports in, this year in 16 races. Now, this is uh, across the main division, um, the East Division, and the West Division. He'll be running the full East Series campaign. Uh, which is three standalones and five primaries, or five combos, I should say, and then a couple of West Series races. Now, um, looking at the article, I can't exactly find. Um, he wants to run the big tracks. Uh, he will be his first intermediate race will be Kansas in the fall. He will be running uh, Sonoma and Watkins Glen. Uh, then there's a West race and Main Division race. Um, obviously, the full East Division. Not really sure where. Uh, the other races will be taking place. Uh, Gio runs on uh, the late model circuit. Very, very talented driver. Didn't he? Didn't Gio win the Winchester 400 and then run over Stephen Nassie's father or something like that? Was that Gio? Can anyone in the chat confirm that? Was that Gio that happened? That whole thing with Stephen Nassie? Oh, it was. Oh, okay. Well, okay then. Um, well, hopefully Gio doesn't do that in the Arca series. <laughs> uh, um, then again, it's Steven Nassie for you. What do you expect? I don't really like him. Um, but, uh, yeah, so, um, yeah, Gio will be running all those races. Um, that is one of your main East uh, title competitors. I did want to also talk about that for a brief moment. Obviously, not the brightest part of ARCA right now is the East division, uh, but we still want to, I still want to talk about it for a brief moment. Um, uh Obviously, William Sawalich is returning for a full-time East campaign again, which is not surprising since he can't. I feel like the only reason why he's running East is because William Sawalich is obviously too young to run the main division. So they're running the East series just so he can get another championship, just like how it was last year. I mean, come on. It's just kind of, it's, it's an easy championship to go for. So you have William Sawalich in the 18, Gio Rogero in the 20, then you got Paul Owens, who's rumored to be driving the number 30 for Rhett Jones Racing. Then you got Rita Goulet in the 31. You got D.L. Wilson. Uh, this might be a tie-in, but we'll talk more about this later. D.L. Wilson will be driving the 39 and Dale Shear in the 98. Those are your full-time East drivers right now. Kind of safe to say it might be a two-car two -car race. Uh, all due respect to everyone else, but uh, they don't have the equipment or the money that the 18 and the 20 have. So, but Hey, the 18 and the 20 put on some very entertaining battles. So I think some of those East races might still be pretty entertaining, uh, but good for Gio. Uh, and like I said, a great idea to get all forms of tracks uh, this year. You got road courses for him. You got intermediates and the short tracks. And obviously since he'll be 18 starting in 2025, it would not shock me if we see Gio run for Venturini full time next year next year in 2025 in the 20 car would not shock me. Um, yeah. Oh yeah. And Caleb Costner. Yeah. Uh, Caleb Costner too. add him the 93. It looks like he'll be running the full East deal too. So not too bad, not too bad. And then I could see Gio. I could see Gio maybe moving to like Sam hunt in 2026. I think Gio Rogero will be one of those short track guys that could really take the series by storm. Uh, but yeah, that's great. Great deal for him. Um, you got Jake Finch, another more Venturini news. He will be driving select races uh, for Venturini Motorsports. At first, it was just announced. At first, it was just announced that uh, Jake Finch would be driving, uh, would be driving the uh, 20 car at Daytona. Uh, that was announced, but then uh, he will be running a couple more races. I believe one of those will be Kansas. Um, is he running Dover? I don't think he's running Dover. Um, God, yeah, I can't get, I can't think of off the top of my, sorry guys. I can't think of it off the top of my head right now. Uh, I thought I had this all written down, but yeah, he'll be driving the 20 car in a few more races this year. Like I said, the 20 car is going to be kind of an all-star car, uh, with Jake Finch driving, Geo driving, and, um, maybe we'll see Jesse Love. Well, I was about to say, no, never mind, never mind. Scratch that. 
He's a, he's an RCR. Maybe we'll see um, maybe a truck driver drop, drop back down to run an ARCA race here or there. Uh, who knows? But the 20 car will still be full time just with various drivers. Uh, but yeah, uh, Jake Finch, not it doesn't look like he might be running for uh, his team this year, his own team this year in ARCA. They do have cars still. Maybe it wouldn't shock me to see the one the one at some point do it again. But uh, uh, Jake Finch will be running some race in the 20. Dean Thompson. Yeah, Dean Thompson would actually probably I could see that being the case. Dean Thompson maybe filling out some of the intermediate races that uh, are not already filled on the schedule for the 20 car. I could see that easily. And then uh, some other news, we've got Central Coast Racing. Uh, they did announce Tyler Reif. Uh, kind of expected that uh, announcement, but it was confirmed a couple weeks ago that Tyler Reif, the younger brother of Tanner Reif, will be running the full-time West Series schedule for um, uh, Central Coast Racing. For the people who don't know who that is, that is Todd Souza's team, the number 13. Uh, they also might run some main division races, such as the road courses. We might even see Todd Souza come back for that. He he is retired from full time action, but we could see Todd Souza come back for the uh, some one off road races, um, and some potential dirt races. Who knows? Um, obviously that all depends on them. Uh, I'm sure we'll get those announcements uh, if they do come along. But it wouldn't shock me if you see the. Uh, 13 car at some of the main division races this year. Um, we also got, uh, yeah, Sawalich and Gray. So obviously, uh, William Sawalich returning to pretty much the exact same schedule he was running uh, in this year's ARCA division. Obviously, William Sawalich is continuing his big path into the Xfinity series. Uh, he'll be running nine truck races this year and will be running some Xfinity races this year. Uh, he does turn 18 on October 3rd. So he will be eligible to run some Xfinity races at the very end, end, end of the year. Um, but for now, he will unfortunately have to sit out Daytona um, and Kansas and Charlotte uh, due to his age. And Tanner Gray, uh, Tanner Gray, uh, one of the Gray brothers, will be um, will be uh, taking over the reins now. Obviously, um, now obviously uh, Connor Mosack was driving that 18 last year. Didn't exactly, uh, didn't exactly go well. Uh, didn't exactly go well, um, go well there. Uh, they did win a race at Kansas, but other than that, it wasn't the best showing. Uh, Mosack's back to uh, Chevrolet now, which might be a better fit for him. Tanner Gray, I think this is a good fit for him. Get him back in a really competitive ARCA car. Show him, show, kind of improve his confidence for this year's truck racing. Um, I think, with Tanner behind the wheel instead of Connor, I think they got a really, really good shot at the owner's championship. Um, they narrowly missed out last year to Venturini. Um, obviously, though, I think Sawalich and them will be a beast for the owner's title. Sawalich also will be running select West Series races along with the full East Series schedule, select main races. And I do believe, sorry, William um, will be running uh, Portland. I think he'll be running the Portland West race and the Sonoma West race. So those will be the two West races. And that's very smart. Get him as much road course experience as possible. Uh, much road course experience as possible. Uh, the NASCAR freak in the chat, not 12 cars. Just because they have a different letter uh, does not mean it's 12 different cars. I don't believe they have. I'm not sure. The fast track race doesn't have 12 plate cars. They're going to bring a lot of cars, but not 12. Um. But yes, for Sawalich, he's just waiting to turn 18. And then I would not be shocked if you see that announcement that William Sawalich is running full time in the Xfinity series in 2025. Kid's got a lot of talent. He's very successful in late models. Uh, been so far very successful in ARCA. Like I said, the East champion last year will probably, I mean, man, I don't know. Geo is pretty good, but um, going for two straight East series championships and more wins in the West and main division, hopefully so. Good luck to them and for Tanner Gray. It's a good opportunity for him to get back into some really, really good equipment. Not that Tricon Garage isn't good equipment, but, I mean, Tanner Gray wasn't exactly lighting the world on fire in the truck series. So maybe maybe this ARCA ride can get him some confidence back. Hopefully. Um, uh, Isaac Johnson, we kind of already mentioned that um, earlier when we were going over the entry list, but he will run a second Van Alst entry at Daytona, number 34, 
Um, as of now, we really don't know what Greg Van Ellis's plans are. I doubt it's full time. Obviously, we had the the scuffle that was last year. I mean, he man, Greg Van Ellis had such a tough couple months. Uh, from the months of maybe like March through May, were really really tough for him. Ever since the Daytona win, it just went downhill. Um, which I felt so bad for him. He came back for a couple of starts, did fairly okay. And then he had the nasty crash at Talladega. It's just like man. Greg, Greg deserved better. So it's great to see him come back. Unclear on what how many races he'll be running. I assume he'll be at Talladega 2 uh, just because the play races are, again, his best, re realistically, his best chance to win on a weekly basis. Um, and great to see Isaac Johnson. I, I believe he ran IRP or Bristol last year for Costner Weaver. So great to see him get this opportunity. Um, and, yeah, maybe they'll work together. Mason Mitchell. Now, this is this one's been interesting. Now, for the people who this has not been put on ArcaRacing.com, you actually have been able to follow Mason Mitchell's Twitter account. Now, for the people who have not been following Mason Mitchell's Twitter account, he has been heavily, heavily um, posting about a potential return to Arca. Not necessarily um, like with cryptic messages, but basically just by. Um, posting photos, posting photos. Now, of course, Mason Mitchell is from my hometown. He's right here in West Des Moines, Iowa. Uh, that's right where I am. So uh, Mason Mitchell, he posted photos of the Iowa Speedway yesterday. Uh, in December, he posted photo of what looks like a brand new ARCA car. And a couple days before that, he posted photos of what looks like him testing that new ARCA car. And who knows, man? Who knows? And racing announcement season, I'll wait. Again, cryptic messages. It would not shock me if we see Mason Mitchell back in ARCA, and it would not shock me if we see him run Iowa, considering, you know, that's his home track, like mine. So I I would love to see Mason Mitchell come back. I think he's, I think he's another one of those what-if stories in ARCA that never really got the chance. Now, he really did it the hard way. He had his own operation, Mason Mitchell Motorsports. They won the championship in 2014, and things things looked big for him. You know, they ran a truck race, but then kind of after that, it just kind of stabilized, and then it kind of went downhill. And unfortunately, by 2018, um, Mason just kind of ran out of money. You know, that old crappy word. I mean, after midseason in 2018, he just ran out of money. Um, you know, team pretty much had to go up for sale, which which is a real shame. But by 2018, the team just wasn't really good anymore. They were mid-pack at best. Um, but I love Mason. I hope he makes a comeback for sure, uh, it, whether it's his own operation. I mean, it looks like it. Maybe Mason Mitchell Motorsports makes a comeback. Who knows? But uh, I would love to see Mason come back, run Iowa. Just Again, he's one of those guys that deserved another shot. He deserved a shot, never got it, but he's an ARCA champion. He's a great driver. Really, really good driver. He just deserved a shot, but he never got it because he didn't have the sponsorship, and that sucks. Uh, but hopefully these cryptic messages and cryptic photos are actually leading to something because that'd be cool to see Mason Mitchell come back. Um, other news, Costner Weaver Motorsports. We did kind of touch on this again as well, but we'll go into more detail here. Uh, big deal for them, Caleb Costner stepping up his game, um, running full-time in the main division, running full-time in the East division, and running a second full-time car in the East Division along with himself. Uh, they'll be running the number 93 in the main division. Uh, he'll be running the 93 full-time in the East Division. And the 39 will be full-time with D.L. Wilson. Yes, D.L. Wilson moves um, from Fast Track Racing. Well, Ed Thompson Racing being helped with Fast Track now to over Costner Weaver. I don't know if it's the same deal with Ed Thompson Racing over there. Uh, but either way... Still great to see um, uh, DL, well, DL back after his awful crash at Phoenix last year. I mean, I mean, I don't know if you guys really read into DL's injuries from that crash. It was gnarly. DL took a hell of a hit at Phoenix last year. Great to see him just back in a race car. It's, it's really, really good to see. So, uh, But for Costner Weaver, man, you got to love it. You got to love more teams, more support for this series. Anytime you see the words full-time ARCA car, that's music to my ears because obviously the more full-time cars, the merrier.
Um, Tomeo Cosentino Racing, guys. You know, I I saw their messages. They're uh, they're they're open for business. Uh, you know, they got cars. They're ready to go. They got super speedway cars. They got short track cars. Tony Cosentino, guys, he's got some good equipment. Um, I, I it hurts to see them just sitting in the shop, man. But at the end of the day, if they don't have the money to go, they're not going to go. And um, I really hope they get someone for Daytona. They're a good team. I mean, you know, before they had to shut down full-time operations, Tony Co Tony Cosentino likely had the season played out the way they should have, where he ran full-time. I bet Tony Cosentino would have finished third or fourth in points. So, um, unfortunate for him. Hopefully, we see the Tomeo Cosentino team back, but it all depends on a, a funded driver. They desperately need a funded driver. So, um, did want to give uh, did want to give them a shout out. They're open for business. They just need a driver. Um, Dale Quarterly will return. Unclear if he's going to run Daytona. Dale is in the process of repairing his dirt car that he crashed last year that he got from the Ryan Unzinger. Um, Bill Hendren team. Um, so expect to see, uh, hit him back at the dirt races and the road course races, um, and the West series road course races. So about probably six, seven races total. You'll probably see, uh, Dale quarterly at, um, still unclear if he will run Daytona Talladega. He does have a plate car, the old GMS car. It's not hurt by any means. So we'll see if Dale might run, um, Obviously, what does the future hold for Red Jones? Obviously, we've talked about that earlier. Frankie Munez will run part-time, more than likely. Paul Owens might run some East races, uh, the full-time East racing division for them. Um, and then we also got potential, I mean, could there be some deal with Bobby Dale Earnhardt? The reason why I mentioned that is Bobby Dale Earnhardt, I don't know if this was a collaboration effort, but the car was built in the, um, uh, the uh, Red Jones shop. But Bobby Dale Earnhardt tested a car at Hickory with another driver. I don't, I don't remember the guy's name, but they tested another car at Hickory like a month or two ago. And I'm not sure if that's leading to anything or if that was just a promotional video test, but who knows? Uh, we'll just have to see what comes out of that. Alex, Alex Pagoni. Yeah. Alex Pagoni and uh, Bobby Dale Earnhardt were testing cars. Um, again, I'm not sure if it was for a video, maybe it didn't have to do with Arca, but the, Red Jones hauler was there, and that's where the cars came from. So who knows if that's going to lead to something. Um, then a, uh, last couple of tributes here. Um, we do have another team, A.J. Moyer. As we know, they he did have a split from Peterson Motorsports. It actually comes from uh, Lyle uh, Toledo. Uh, saw this on his Twitter. Apparently, uh, A.J. Moyer will be debuting a new team at Daytona, driving the number 88. Shout out to number 88, one of my favorite numbers in racing. Uh, he will be driving number 88 for uh, Moyer uh, Petronio Racing at Daytona. Uh, so, again, another team. Like I said, oh, sorry, hit the microphone. Another team that is not going to be at the test but will be at Daytona. Guys, I'm telling you, we're going to have DNQs. I'll be shocked if we don't have DNQs, man. And that – I – uh. I don't know, man. That'd be just crazy to see DNQs in an ARCA race at Daytona in 2024. I don't think anyone would have called that. I really don't think anyone would have called that. So, um, uh, yeah, but I will say this, though. Um, I will say this, though. They don't have any owner points. So if they want to make sure they make the re that race, they better have a good motor. Um. I'll be shocked if 60, are you meaning the 60 car in the chat or the 60 cars? Uh, Cause I don't know. I mean, Brad Perez and Josh Williams are teasing something. Could it be an ARCA car? Who knows? Looks like it's an Ilmore for the 88. Well, that's good. Um, but yeah, uh, Brad Perez and Josh Williams are teasing something. Uh, could they, could they be uh, getting an ARCA car? That'd be great. We know uh, Josh Williams does have an ARCA car. Uh, with X pipes, gotta love X pipes. Um, maybe that'll be something. Who knows? Um, I don't think we're gonna get sixty entries, but it wouldn't shock me if we maybe get forty-five at the most. I could see as many as forty-five ARCA cars showing up, which would really give us a great race. I mean, last year's I went on record, and I think we can all agree. I thought the Daytona ARCA race was arguably the best race of the whole weekend and Speed Week last year. 
Behind that was a Daytona 500, and behind that was Xfinity, and then truck. That ARCA race stole the show for me in terms of the racing, the winner, just, just the winner, too. It helped. You know, Greg Van Ouse winning the underdog story. I And the fact that we didn't have an overtime finish. Like I said, hard to believe the ARCA race of all races was the one race in Speed Week that didn't have an overtime finish last year. Hopefully we can continue that this year. Hopefully we can continue that. Um, but yeah, lots of great announcements, more to come, obviously way more to come. Like we said, we're still expecting Tony Bridinger's 2024 plans. Uh, we know Brad Smith, they'll be running two cars. I don't know if it's full time, but, uh, I would expect to see the 49, uh, quite a few times this year as Rick Reddick Tackman, who ran for them at, uh, Milwaukee, uh, is expected to do more races. The Chevrolet is completely torn apart right now. If you guys know the Chevrolet uh, that I told you about, um, that car has been completely torn apart. They are working on the chassis, freshening it up, freshening up the SB2. Um, arguably, it's probably going to be the best car Brad's driven in a long time. <laughs> um, yeah, uh, some other plans to talk about here. Anything else to really to talk about looking over this list? Um but yeah, it looks like Fast Track Racing looks like their lone primary full-time driver uh, will be um, uh, the Maples guy. I've got, is it Mark Maples? I don't want to. I don't want to get his name wrong. Michael Maples in the '99 looks like he'll be the full-time driver in a partnership effort with Fast Track Racing. So great to see them uh, running full-time. Like I said, Caleb Costner, Jason Kitzmiller will be in probably in a part-time ARCA schedule. I would expect to see Grant Enfinger, since Grant Enfinger is running the number nine full-time truck. Uh, I would not be shocked to see Grant Enfinger maybe run the 97 at other select ARCA races. Uh, maybe Landon Lewis, too, considering he ran with the team at uh, Phoenix last year and had a great performance. Uh, that's, that'd be a good place for Landon Lewis to run. It's a good team there. Um Young's Motorsports still has an ARCA program, obviously with them going full-time Xfinity racing and having them to focus on their truck. It'll be unclear to see how many races they run. Mandy Chick, Mandy Chick was supposed to run full-time, but only ended up running a handful of races. Uh, Scott Melton, how many races he'll run. Uh, there is another Kimmel car open for Daytona, by the way. Kimmel would run two cars if another person brings the money. So if anyone here wants to know, there, there is a second Kimmel ride available. Good, good equipment. Um, we know brother-in-law motorsports, they are committed right now to, uh, three races, brother-in-law motorsports, the will run, um, Daytona, Talladega and Pocono. Those will be the three races, uh, that that team runs. Uh, other than that, I don't know how many races they will run. As far as I know for the Emerling Gase car, the, they have their lone ARCA car. I believe it'll be Daytona and Talladega will be the two races that that car runs. It's, I mean, it's just a play car. I don't think they're going to, there's no real need to run it anywhere else with their Xfinity program. Um, Tim Richmond, I would expect him at the two plate tracks and the road courses. Those are uh, the plate tracks and the road courses are his specialty. Um, obviously we know Shane Van Gisbaren is running the 20 at Daytona to help get prepped for the Xfinity race. I would not expect him in another ARCA race probably for the rest of his career. He's only doing this because he has to. Um, probably expect to see Landon Huffman, not again, not that Landon Huffman, the other, th this Landon Huffman, he might run some short track races cause he's been running their late model program. Connor Mosack, I could see running the number 28 at the intermediates. Same with Carson Quapel, who ran the car last year at Kansas. Um, like I said, we'll just have to see with more announcements coming up. Uh, I do want to also talk about the West circuit before we get out of here. Um, yeah, Bryce Hogberg will be in the number 11 uh, for Daytona. Uh, so yeah, as far as I know, I think Ed Pompa is going to be in the 10. Bryce in the 11. Michael in the 99. John Garrett's running in a separate operation for the 66. I don't believe Fast Track's going to be helping with that effort. So that does leave the 01 and the 12 open for Fast Track Racing. Um, now, again, you know, some people have been saying... Um, you know, I'm, I'm not going to speculate on here, but some people have been accusing. I did want to touch on this for a brief moment, too. Some people have been accusing Venturini Motorsports of potential race manipulation. 
I see it. I see where you're, you know, you're coming from with that, but at the same time, I don't. Uh, but someone did point out something pretty interesting that I did want to touch on is that with Love and Corey Heim, who we did see, you know, maybe get help with that, those were uh, TRD drivers. Those were TRD drivers. I believe TRD was paying for them. You know, I usually that's how it goes with sometimes a Toyota racing development program. I don't think uh, TRD necessarily has that this year. I don't think TRD necessarily has that this year. Uh, Chris Wright's not part of the TRD program. Uh, Amber Balkan's not part of the TRD program. So I don't, I mean, you can say what you want. I don't personally see any race manipulation. I don't really know what people are talking about there. Um, but at the end of the day, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. They'll be just fine out there. Venturini's fine. Uh, they'll have some rocket ships, though, that's for sure. So, oh, oh, if we see uh, Amber out there, she might win. Who knows? Anything's possible in the Arca, uh, Arca Menard series, that's for sure. Uh, but I did want to touch on that, too. Uh, the Arca West series, of course, uh, for, in terms of full-time drivers, we got Robbie Keenley in the 1, uh, David Smith in the 05, Danica Dart will be in the 0711. She'll be splitting those two numbers. Tyler Reif, of course, in 13, Jack Wood in the 16, Kyle Keller in the 70, uh, Takuma Koga, of course, in the 7, and likely Eric Nascimento is returning as well. So, yeah, that's the West Series Circuit. And, of course, we'll end the episode. We'll end this podcast with yours truly. Um, hopefully, everyone in the Arca Garage likes me. I love Big Bill. Big Bill loves me to death. I love Bill, Bill Venerini. Oh, uh, yeah, add Nick Jonides as well. Forgot him. But yeah, Big Bill loves me. Wayne loves me. I hope everyone in the Arca Garage likes me because uh, I hope to be racing in the Arca Menard Series this year. So hopefully if any Arca drivers or Arca owners watch this podcast, um, hopefully you won't be mad when I join your series. Uh, that's the goal. The goal is to hopefully make my Arca debut at uh, at Iowa. That's the goal. Uh, and then to run IRP. And then Kansas, those are my three races that I want to run this year. Anything else would just be a bonus. Uh, but yes, so hope, hopefully any ARCA people that are watching this right now, um, hopefully those guys uh, are uh, um, are not, not going to be too mad at me. And hopefully they'll welcome me with open arms. But uh, I'm excited, guys. Like I'm legitimately smiling so hard right now. It's cramping my face. Um, cause I'm just excited on what this year could bring me. And I hope you guys are here to join me all the way with track vlogs, all that good stuff. Um, yeah, yeah. So it's just going to be a fun year, guys. It's going to be a fun year in Arca. Uh, we'll be here next week. Uh, probably not on a Wednesday. I uh, still haven't decided exactly which day I'm going to be doing the review por portion of this show. Um, exactly which day I'm going to be doing the review portion. Um, hmm, maybe Monday, Monday or Tuesday, one of those two days. Uh, just, to, I'm going to wait until we make sure of all the results, all the, some photos, all that good stuff. Um, so maybe Monday or Tuesday. Um, if, if it's nothing is out yet, like the results aren't out yet, maybe Wednesday, who knows? Uh, once you guys get that notification, then you guys know, then you guys know. So, uh, um, but yeah, anyway, guys, we were here for what? 63 minutes. So we were here for over an hour. And God bless all of you that were actually here for the entire hour. I love y'all so much. And for the people who tuned in for a couple minutes, I love y'all just as much. But uh, the goal for this podcast is at least, let's see, we're at 10 likes. Let's get up to 25 likes. I think that's uh, I think that's doable. Uh, but anyway, guys, um, again, I, I love y'all. Da Dawson Fair, you just joined. We're at the end of the show. <laughs> Go back and watch the whole thing. I'm not. I'm not repeating it all. <laughs> uh, but anyway, guys, I'm gonna get out of here. Enjoy the rest of your Wednesday night. Um, enjoy the architest. It's not gonna be televised, but uh, just keep up to date on tweets. You'll see plenty of photos. You'll see videos circulating. Um, and then join me for the Daytona test review next week. Um, and yeah. I've been Colby Evans. I've been starting Park Car, and I'm signing off. So long, guys. Take care.